Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Now today we're taking a look at my old Lenovo Y580. Um, I'm going to clean it out a little bit, um, install an SSD and uh, then install uh, Windows 10 on that SSD. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get to it. Alright, so I'm just about ready to uh, swap the hard disk out of this one, but before I do that I figured I wanted to show you guys the uh, ports that are on here. Now on the front there really isn't much, we have some LEDs over here and on, right over here we have an SD card reader. Uh, this is honestly something I'm very grateful for, I've used that quite a lot. Also right here on the side we have two USB 3 ports, an Ethernet, HDMI, VGA and the exhaust port for the, uh, well the heat sinks. Also have a Kelsington lock. There's really nothing on the back, we have the hinges and the uh, battery. And right here on the uh, last side, I guess, we have the uh, power char well, sorry, the uh, charging port, a USB 2, um, the DVD drive, another USB 2, and uh, headphone and microphone jacks. Alright, so the laptop has now been turned on its uh, well bottom up, and we can now remove the uh, battery. As you can see, it's actually a fairly small battery compared to the size of the. Uh, well, the rest of the system, but it does its job well enough, and I'm pretty much always using this with the uh, charger in it. Uh, the batteries pretty much just stay fail safe if, if I ruin a charger or I quickly need to use the laptop. Alright, so I got the uh, bottom panel off. Uh, as you can see right here, we have our two sticks of RAM. Uh, these are 4 gigabytes each. We have the hard drive up here, our network card here. And right here we have our uh, fan. I'm gonna blow some air into it. Maybe I can get the uh, so just a little bit of the dust out. The thermal seemed okay, so I'm not gonna disassemble this uh, any further. All right, so I got the hard disk out of the uh, old hard disk cage. Uh, it should be fairly simple just to put this thing uh, back in there. But I quickly wanted to uh, take a look at this uh, the uh, old hard disk. Uh, it's produced by Samsung and it is a terabyte. I have not been able to figure out where, um, well, where the uh, spindle speed is uh, is is on this thing. And been looking at it for a while, but I can't really figure out how fast this thing is. I do believe it's 7,200 RPM, but I not really sure. All right, so I got the uh, SSD installed in here. Um, I'm still thinking 240 gigabytes is a little too little, but I am planning on using the um, external hard drive as a, the main storage device and just have my frequently used uh, programs on here. But enough talking, let's um, put her back together and fire her up just to see if, it, uh, if this thing actually works. Good news, uh, Windows 10 seems to be installing without any issues, so, but I'll be back once it's actually done and we can start actually uh, benchmarking this. Uh, well, I'm not expecting too much of a difference in the actual performance of the processor and the GPU, but it'd be fun to see if there's actually one, just a little bit of difference in there. Alright, so I've decided to run the Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool. I've set all the settings to low. So far it actually seems to be doing quite well. Uh, the reason I decided to, uh, to run this test was pretty much just to uh, make sure that the uh, GTX 660M would kick in once the um, well once it was needed. Alright, just over 4000 uh, points, that's actually not too bad. The game itself says it should work at a uh, standard level, so I'm happy about this test. And once again we're running a Cinebench R15. So far it actually looks like the maximum temperature is just above what it was before. I think this may be because of the Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool, but I'm not really sure. Alright, so we got a score of 552 points. If I'm not mistaken, that's just slightly below what we had on Windows 7. Also, our maximum temperature on the hottest core was 71 degrees Celsius, which is Again, if I'm not mistaken, 5 degrees above what we got on uh, Windows 7. I'm not sure why this is. Uh, I really can't see why this should happen, but who knows? Maybe it's because the heat pipes are still hot from the uh, Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool. Alright, so something I've noticed about Windows 10 and uh, well, this particular Lenovo model is that 
Even though most of my uh, controls seem to be working fine, I cannot get the uh, Wi-Fi off to work. Um, it seems to be the only one that isn't working, uh, which is kind of unfortunate since I, may, I might actually draw use from that in a little while. Also, when I first uh, did the installation, the trackpad was uh, very sluggish and uh, non-responsive pretty much, but seems to have fixed itself after Windows 10 updated, so that's not an issue anymore. Now, generally, the system seems to be, uh, well, a little more responsive. Uh, I, I do have a lot of uh, experience with, with uh, Windows 10 so far, but it's going to be fun using it as a uh, daily driver for a while now. Alright, so I know this was a short video and there will really wasn't that much to it, but I pretty much just wanted to show uh, to show this to you. And uh, the real reason I'm actually making this uh, video is that I'm being deployed, and thus I'll have a hard time making videos for you guys in uh, well the coming months. Now I do have some pre-recorded videos um, that I'll uh, publish while I'm away, but uh, don't expect a uh, <coughs> excuse me. Don't expect the uh, hugely uh, and well thought out videos. Now there is one project I was hoping to get done before I uh, deployed but I didn't get a graphics card in time so I will unfortunately not be able to uh, turn the uh, HP Compact into a uh, gaming PC. But I will, uh, will revisit it once I uh, come home again. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.